The thing about the welfare state is we have to keep in mind, somebody very well said this morning, it is not a charitable organization. It was founded to create a well society. The whole point about it is that it should be totally inclusive and everybody is equal within it. Within the welfare state, the National Health Service is the huge, crucial, egalitarian department. Everybody can fall sick, regardless of whether they're rich or poor, old or young, and the point about the National Health Service is to take that right out of the commercial field, to make it not a commodity, something everybody can rely on and feel free of the fear that they or their loved ones will be ill without the ability to do anything about it. It is going. It is not merely under attack. It is due for decommissioning, as the McKinsey report to the Department of Health recommended. They didn't say decommissioning the whole system, but that's the word they used for getting rid of big chunks of it. Jackie and I are sharing this, and I would, I'm going to talk about the current cuts. And my main job is simply to explain as best I can for myself uh, what is going on and what the mystery about this is. According to the government, there are no cuts. The National Health Service budget is being increased by 0.01%, sorry, 0.1% every year over the next four years, in real terms, according to them. Yet, is there anybody here, hands up anybody, who doesn't know about cuts taking place in the hospital trusts or the other services near you? Let me see how many hands go up. I thought so. Two, three people have not heard about cuts taking place. Well, believe me, if you ask somebody tomorrow, you will. Uh, just uh, look, look at what's going on. All around the country, massive cuts are taking place. How could these two things happen? In May last year, the chief executive of the NHS, David Nicholson, ordered savings to start being made across the whole NHS. The reasoning was this. Health costs are expected to go on rising year by year. And in five years' time, that's to say as of last year, in 2014, the NHS was expected to be costing 124 billion in 2014. But by the middle of last year, it was clear that the government was going to either cut or best freeze NHS funding. So assuming it would be frozen and not cut, there was going to be a gap between last year's budget, which was 104 billion, and the 2014 budget, which was going to be expected to be 124 billion, there was a gap of 20 billion. So what was going to be done? He said, we must become more efficient. We must find a way of getting what he called productivity savings, efficiency savings, out of the NHS on a fixed budget. So he ordered these cuts to be made, and the savings were supposed to come from doing things more cheaply in particularly in two ways. First of all, moving work out of hospitals into what are called cost-efficient settings. In other words, what are now being talked about as polyclinics or polysystems or nothing in particular because they actually haven't got a plan. And secondly, by reducing the demand for treatments by getting people to look after themselves more or just shut up and stop asking to be treated. <coughs> But there were two problems with this. First of all, many of the kinds of change that were supposed to bring about efficiencies, especially the big one, moving care out of hospitals, ongoing chronic care, outpatient work, and so on, <coughs> actually cost money to move. You have to move people, you have to move premises, you have to create new plant, you have to equip uh, local places to do this work that's currently done in hospitals. And the whole idea was not to spend money, to save, but to save it. Not, and moreover, last year, you might have said, well, they'd have turned to the private sector. But last year, and even now, the private sector businesses can't borrow. So <clears throat> this, this was a major problem. The second problem with the cuts 
is that the kind of changes that will make it more, the system more efficient take a lot of time to bring about. As on very complex organization, those kinds of change take time. But primary care trusts were told that the bulk of the efficiency savings, so-called, had to be, quote, front-loaded. In other words, make them sooner rather than later. And actually, they were told to make them in 2010 to 2011. So managers not being able to make the cuts that really would produce efficiency and having to make them quickly turned to the only other thing they could do and they started cutting jobs. When you cut jobs, it has nothing to do with efficiency. It makes the system more inefficient because the vacancies occur randomly and the people who are left behind are overworked and start taking sick leave because they're stressed out and their own doctors said hey, you mustn't go back to work. <clears throat> and so this is what we're now seeing in the hospitals and clinics uh, all over England. <clears throat> in addition, the government is lying about this through its teeth. It says the NHS budget is going to go on rising, but in fact, it doesn't say two things. First of all, healthcare costs rise about 1 or 2% faster than all other costs rise in any country. Healthcare costs have a built-in high inflationary level, drugs, equipment and other technology changes and other things. <clears throat> and so they haven't measured the so-called real increases in terms of the healthcare inflation, they've measured them in terms of general inflation. So actually that accounts for an annual decline in the real funds available to the NHS. Secondly, they're taking 2.3 billion out of the NHS budget and transferring it to local authorities for social care. And the idea behind this is that it will make so-called intermediate care available to get people out of hospital quicker into some other kind of setting. But in fact, the social care budgets of the local authorities are also being cut by over five billion. So actually, this is money out of the NHS which will not be effective in making the NHS more efficient. It's chaos. Now, the question is, does the government care? On the contrary. I don't think the government cares. I think Mr. Lansley is, what is more likely to be privately quite satisfied with this. The NHS is anathema to Thatcherites. It embodies the best of the welfare state. It symbolizes a society in which everyone is cared for by everyone else. And it underpins what is most equal in what's left of the post-war egalitarian settlement. Also, it keeps a big slice of the economy out of the reach of for-profit businesses. It's 100 billion pounds a year is money that private sector would really love to get its hands on. Both are reasons that Lansley would prefer the NHS to start falling apart, to start failing. He'd like people who can afford it to start going private, and he'd like his privatization plans to come to seem more acceptable because the NHS seems to be going down the drain. What's amazing to me so far is that the Labour Party is not standing up and fighting to defend the NHS which it created. It created it, we have paid for it, and if it is not going to defend the NHS, we have to. with the speaker who said the issue is not violent action versus peaceful action. Uh, <clears throat> I don't want violence against people. I take a different view about windows depending on who they belong to. <clears throat> but <clears throat> I think the issue is clarity versus spin. That's fundamental. Very quickly, the several speakers have mentioned Claire Gerada, the new president of the General Practitioners, the Royal College of GPs, who has come out very well against the white paper. But at the end of it, she said something like, I do congratulate Mr. Lansley on his bravery, and also he shouldn't be in so much of a hurry. And I thought, if I was in a car being driven by a madman towards a cliff, and they'd put on the child lock and I couldn't get out, would I say, please go slower? <laughs> no. I would grab him and grab the wheel and turn it round. I think it's really important. 
it's really important to stop being mealy-mouthed and call a spade a spade and don't go in, otherwise it gets framed by the government and we can't win it.